Um, you know, you know, I can't, I'm not in a position to advise those guys. I don't have the data to advise those guys, so I can't tell them if the decisions they made in the last six months were good ones or bad ones. And there's no saying that my direction, which admittedly was different, might have been worse. So, I mean, there's no, there's no real way to say. So, why did you never sell the company? <laughs> They got two offers in oh, five, only, two, only two. In five years, Dick really was offered twice to to be acquired. Um, and and those were <laughs> Current and this other large company in the South Bay. Um, <laughs> And, and I, will t I will tell you, I mean, everybody knows this stuff because it's been documented a hundred times over. In case you don't know, it was Google. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think that, I, I think that the image of Dick that was out there was that constantly we're being offered money that we should have taken. Well, there was word of, I think there was, Microsoft was in there at one point, Yahoo, what was there? Was I don't know, guys. I, I, honestly, believe me. It would you know, be about, that somewhere. You know, I think that there there have been conversations that are casual, and, and if there's one piece of advice that I could give this audience and <coughs> and future entrepreneurs, it's that talk is cheap. You know, somebody could ha be having lunch with you and say, you know, I think strategically this would be great for insert large media company here, <laughs> um, and then you you start you're you're like, well. If you say anything positive and you start going down that route, it's a ridiculous distraction to your management team. It happened a couple times. It happened with Fox. I remember they were interested. Um, and I was like, well, Fox, I'm not sure, you know, is there an alignment there or not, but let's go to LA and check it out. And it took a, it killed a week. Now, a week may not seem like a lot of time. Uh, you know, from the outside looking in. But let me tell you, in dig time, a week is a feature. It's it's a HD DVD crisis. It's a whatever. It's like the, it's a huge amount of time, and to take your management team out of the out of the you know car <laughs> and say just stand on the side of the road for for a little bit instead of driving forward because you have this concept, this conversation that's not real. Whatever happened with that? There's, there's no offer. I mean, you know, so this is this is the whole point, is that looking back over the course of Dick's history, I'm not revealing anything that's in non-disclosure to say that, look, sure, there was interest. There always was interest. But interest is not necessarily the same thing as having an opportunity to sell the company. And I, I always said, and I said this publicly, we're not stupid. We want to be independent, but if somebody offers us a decent you know, amount of money, and puts it on paper, puts it in front of us, it's our fiduciary responsibility to say, well, I was always surprised, you know, when, when Zuckerberg said no. Because it's, it, at, a certain, at a certain level, you don't know the future. We, there's no way anyone could have known. And so you believe, all entrepreneurs believe, sometimes to a fault in their, in their so, so when you get an offer that big, you got to ask yourself, you know, is from a fiduciary, you know, responsibility as CEO, is this good or is this bad? Now, now, now hindsight, we look back and go, oh, great decision. Um, but that's not how decisions are made. You can't jump forward in time and just see what happens. You have to make a decision in the moment. And when you get sort of offers that are way above your realistic valuation, I'll tell you, looking back, though, our valuation at Dig would have been higher had we not been a business. If I hadn't insisted on bringing revenue into the company as early as I did, we wouldn't have been valued on a multiple of that revenue. It would have been whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then what? So, you know, but on the flip side, I wasn't trying to build it for valuation. I wasn't trying to build the sell. I was trying to build a business, a sustainable business. That's the way I was taught. That's the way I was raised. So would, you, would you change that? I was advising some folks recently who decided to sell their business. Um, 
on this exact issue. A business that could, if they continued, be worth, you know, maybe at its peak, you know, 40, 50 million, that, that probably they'll sell for a single digit, you know. Um, and, and I think that it really just depends on you. It's an emotional decision. It's not really a mathematical one. It's about lifestyle. Where do you want to work for the next X years? Let's call it three, because most of these acquisitions are three year, you know, indentured servitude. Um, <laughs> but realistically, is it interesting to you? Because if it is, then who cares? You know, we, you only live once. You can spend your whole life chasing that dream of that 100x return. But what it really comes down to is do you enjoy your life every day that you wake up and go to work? Do you wake up and when you grab that Blackberry or whatever, you're looking at it, is it because you really care about the people that you work with and you really just want it, you're just emotionally connected? Or is it because you have to? And and I feel I felt like, well, if there's an opportunity to sell your business and have the lifestyle that you want and achieve the goals you set for the business, then sell your business. Right? Go ahead and take the money. Um, on the other hand, Sometimes being independent affords you a certain lifestyle, even if it means that you're going to fizzle you know, at some future point. Maybe that's a good decision. I mean, So would you change your decision? No. I would not change my decision. If, if someone had offered me $5 million to, to sell Dig, and I could have pocketed millions in 2005, I would have said no, and I'd still say no. Um, going back to that moment in time and making that decision. Uh, you know, we tried honestly to be true to our vision and our goals. We tried to be true to our culture and lifestyle. We tried to be honest and loyal to our community that was loyal to us. And we made decisions based on that. I think for us, those were the good decisions. But again, it's not like we really had offers on the table that we could have said no to. Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. And uh, I'm surprised, so you guys are either um, so deeply involved in the conversation, you don't want to interrupt, so. or you've got no questions to ask. Any, we have a couple of minutes left. Anybody have any questions? I think there's Alexia. a mic. Oh, I think button. there's a mic behind you, although we know that Alexia's voice will reach us. Yeah. Or are you recording this and so we need her on the microphone? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, according to an article on TechCrunch, uh, they just laid off 37 percent of its staff. Um, According to an article in TechCrunch, Dick just laid off how much? 37. 37 percent of its staff. Hold on. It just came up. Apparently, it just came up. It just came up. <laughs> God love the internet. <laughs> that sounds awful. So you don't you don't work for Dick or Revision Three, right? Right now. I'm I am chairman of the board of Revision Three. Um, and I do not work for Dick. Um, those people are my are my friends and family, and it sounds awful. Um, Dick has, uh, you know, obviously a lot of meaning for me. And what happens to those people is, I'm sure I'm, Kevin, that I could tell you, would be devastated by the same news. Um, I don't know what it means, and I don't know any details about it. But okay, but in light of this, do you have, I mean, are you, could you reevaluate your regrets, or, I mean, in light of this? Oh, I see, I see <laughs> Do you feel any differently <laughs> than the fact that well, people have just been well, here's, the, here's the question, you know, let's, let's just take the worst case example. The loyal employees worked for the company for years, who's worked at that company you know, with the promise and hope that there would be some kind of either exit for them or a good lifestyle for them. Um, you know, I, I'd like to think that the company we created for the last five years was a wonderful place to work. I'd like to think that they gained knowledge and reputation and to some degree wisdom from being there. 
that will help them in their life going forward. I think that's what our, we are trying to do. And so I don't think that that makes me look back and regret not selling a company sooner. Also, the, the other thing to consider is who has, you know, whenever you're, you're brought into operating business, and I'm sure Matt Williams and, and the new administration over there, administration, the new management team, um, has new data, has new information, has a new culture to operate, and makes decisions in that context. And so I can't look back and, and, and decide, you know, and really have any feedback based on this event that's transpiring now it would be unfair of me to, to even comment, right? So you don't think, David, that you think there's, there's hope? You know, I think, you know what's funny? I, I think it's very, um, it's it, for the 20 plus million people who use that site every month, I think it's very confusing and, and maybe a little insulting when the press talks about the death of Dick. I mean, that's a lot of people. And, you know, granted, it's a global audience. I don't know if the domestic number, I think Tom Stork release was, was smaller, like, like, I think inaccurate. But, but I do think it's a little bit weird to be one of these 20 million people using a website and being told essentially you're stupid for using this website because it's dead. So no, I don't think Dig is dead. I think Dig has a future. I don't know if it's going to be the, you know, super hundred X future that I think um, everyone wanted it to be in the in the media. But I do think it's got a future. Thank you. And I, I was showing the little end card. I think we're and done. I, I think are we are we done, or do we have time for another question or two? If it's up to you. Guys. Well, 16. <laughs> I think we should be done. We're six minutes over. We're six minutes over. We're six Sorry, minutes over. We started six minutes late, so it's okay. Five, said 12, 15 instead of six. Minutes. Unless there's a mutiny and you guys have another question we want to. No? No, I am still holding the microphone. All right. So. <laughs>